Yo, what is up guys? Today we're talking about Destiny 2. Specifically, we're going to be talking about Guardian games. And I've seen a lot of people complain about this event. I personally don't like it for a few reasons that I will be addressing in this video. And it's funny because I was going to make a few videos on the event itself. Like how to farm laurels. How to efficiently do the, the metals and the exotic heavy machine gun review. Which I still might do considering I still have the, the script for it. But honestly, this event has been so empty and just, uh, and I know people are like, well, what does that mean? Let me, let me explain for the people who don't believe me. So usually for me, when the reset day rolls around, I try to kill at least my hunter and my Titans weeklies for the brightest only considering I'm already level 155 on the season pass. And then the next day I would try to kill my warlocks unless I can kill all three characters and unless all the bounties kind of like work really well together and then I can just kill all three characters in one day. I've done that, but it's pretty rare. With this event, it adds two additional weekly bounties, a few dailies and uh, repeatables. The two weeklies give you an extra 400 if you complete both of them and they're pretty easy to complete. Usually I'll do the two weeklies with five repeatables giving me 900 bright dust. And what I mean by that is usually without this event, I would do the Vanguard and Crucible and five repeatables giving me 900 bright dust. Like I said, I would do Gambit more, but I just Gambit's one, one weekly Gambit is the one where it's like, oh, you have to do supers, kill people with supers and just that one, that specific one. Just, I hate it. I hate that one because it just takes forever. So that's probably why I don't do Gambit as much as I should have. But some of you may be asking, why are you talking about bounties so much? Literally, I'm not even kidding here. This is all the event really adds. There's no activity. There's no public place. There's no anything worthwhile reward in my opinion. It's all just bounties. And the quest bounties that are the medals themselves. And the reason as to why I'm explaining to you what I do for the weeklies and dailies is because today, after I do this video, I'm going to log into Destiny 2 and do my weeklies on my hunter, then log off and play State of Decay 2 since that's what's really been scratching that itch for me to have fun. It's a, it's a great game. I've been thinking about making some content for it on my channel since Destiny 2 is just this much of a chore. Like I said, this event had added nothing of value. If anything, it has spurred a class war in a negative light because we really needed that right now. On top of the rewards being two shaders, two emblems, an exotic and a different color on your class item for the rest of the year. Maybe you're thinking, oh, well, if those are the rewards, Eververse must be swimming in content or content. It should be swimming in cosmetics, right? Nope, not really. On one hand, I'm really glad that Eververse is peddling mediocre items, but it also further irritates me that they keep selling items for such ridiculous prices. Ships and Sparrows are $8, emotes are $2 to $12, armor is still $15 each, armor or 6,000 bright dust each, which you can't even farm that much in the event unless you kill about another 500 repeatables on top of doing what I already do on each class. And what do I mean by that? Well, someone actually calculated if you do all of the Vanguard, Crucible, Gambit, and the activity itself, all the weeklies for that, you would, st after like the three week period, you would still need to farm 500 repeatables to get everyone's. And on top, and on top, of that the armor doesn't even change color so on top of it being expensive the blue yellow and red don't even change color which is just a problem that affects everything in the game like armor in the game itself doesn't change color but when you're paying $15 or $45 if you're fucking wild $45 for three sets of armor that does not even change all of the color it's, it's really wild, especially when you actually go to a sparrow or a ship. You can change the color on all three of those characters, all, all three of those colors. The armor does not do that. It's wild. It's so wild. You want this armor? It's premium as fuck. Okay, I'll get it. You can't change the color because why would you? Bro. 
That's wild. That's just wild to me. What about the event itself? If you haven't noticed already, this event is just an extra step on your weekly rotation. Do you do weeklies for Bright Dust or Experience? Then you're just adding another couple of bounties to that rotation. I personally do not care about the class competition since it doesn't really give any real rewards, just bragging rights for that class. But I run every class already, so that is just a shallow reason. This event for me sounded like the Olympics for Guardians, but it was just another bounty farm simulator with OK weeklies, horrible dailies, and OK repeatables. I was hoping maybe the bounties had an increase in Bright Dust, like the weeklies giving you an extra 50, totaling to 250 each, and repeatables at least giving like giving you 20, and maybe dailies like 50 or 100. But nope, I was wrong. Why would that happen? How would I have done this event differently? Well, first and foremost, make at least two activities where you can earn laurels or bonus progression on your bounties in these activities. First would be a crucible playlist called like King of the Hill or something and just have either a 1v1v1 for each class and have them duke it out or a 3v3v3 for Hunter's Titans and Warlocks respectively. Fighting it out, maybe rotate the playlist to have different modes. The second would be a PvE thing in the strike playlist where you queue up with other of your same class and have bonus energy to your super energy and melee. And it could just be super chaotic and fun and I would just make it timed and have like a high score type thing going on so that the other guardians could compete with others. Like imagine a strike playlist where you could see each class and their highest like times and go in and actually try to make it better for the team for for your class imagine three hunters killing a strike imagine three warlocks killing the strike or you know you get the drift i think that would have been a lot better and if they really wanted to like spice it up they could have picked out like five strikes and literally just make it reverse so Instead of you starting at the beginning, you start at the end and work your way up. Imagine imagine the Prison of Elders strike. I forgot what it's called. Imagine that strike, but in reverse, where you go into the where the bosses and you have to go all the way back and fight your way through only to like fight him in another area. That would be cool. I would have thought that was dope, but you know, whatever. The rewards would probably include an armor set that went with the class item that each class had, but that was not affected by the gold, silver, or bronze tint, unless you actually chose to do it. Like, if I could choose to, like, reflect the color of, like, let's say, like, hunters are bronze right now, if that armor had, like, a toggle, I would be okay with that. I think another great thing would have been to give us class inspired weapons, kind of like how they did in Destiny 1 when we got class specific weapons like the hunters got a sniper, the hunters got a sniper rifle. Another great reward would have been like class inspired weaponry, kind of like they did in Destiny 1 when we got those class specific weapons like the hunters got a sniper rifle and ace of spades, titans got a shotgun and Fabian strategy. And the Warlocks got a fusion rifle and Talic. We could get, we could have gotten like legendary weapons back. We could have either gotten the legendary weapons back or make new exotics for each class with our insignia on it. Imagine if those weapons could proc abilities for us. Like maybe that shotgun for Titans activated sunspots, but at like a reduced timer. Hunters got an extra five seconds to invis with the sniper. And Warlocks got a small chain light proc from killing someone with their fusion rifle. Overall, this event just really brings more chores, toxicity towards other classes, and mediocre to subpar rewards. I like the initial idea of what Bungie had, but the execution of the event itself is just pretty boring, especially when I've been running weeklies for about what it feels like forever now, and this just added an extra step to that. I almost have all the triumphs completed, and I can honestly say that I wasn't really trying too hard. I was just doing my usual thing. So, that's pretty much it. Yeah, let me know what you guys think about the event itself. Is it boring? Is it fun? Let me know in the comments below. If you guys want to follow me on my social media out links, links are in the description below. Thank you everyone for the constant support. I really do appreciate it. Not only that, but be careful guys. You guys don't you guys know what's happening in the world. Be safe. Uh, don't cough on people. And yeah, I will see you guys later.